כי המצרים היו אדונים לישראל. כי זה אגיפטים היו המאסטרים של הזאת, של היהודים שלנו. וזה הדור היוצא ממצרים למד מנעוריו לסבול עול מצרים. וזו גנרציה שהיא הולכת לאיזיפט עכשיו, לומד מהם את היהודים, מהם את הבריאה, שכל מה שהיא ידעה היה היוק של איזיפט. היא לא ידעה מה חירות הייתה. היא נולדה כשלב. ונפשו שפלה, ואת הספירט היה לולי. שלב מנטליטי. The whole thing of how do you have slaves? How many, I don't know how many people in Egypt, but let's say one master had uh, 20 slaves. Why don't they just all get together one night and plan a revolution, a revolt, and jump on the, the master, 20 to 1? The slave mentality, not a matter of the power, the muscles. Like he said, the spirit. If he has the slave mentality, he's the slave. The slave doesn't. attack the master. That's the system. And they're born into that system. Not one day, not training. We're talking about, uh, right, 190 years, 210 years in, in Egypt, slavery. <laughs> Hundreds of years. Generation after generation, born slave. That knowing that that's what we do. We listen. When the slave, when the master snaps his fingers, we jump. Why don't we jump on him? No, that it doesn't even dawn on them. That's a different mentality. If they had that idea, that wouldn't be the slave mentality. He says they have a nafsho shvela, this slave spirit, this lowly spirit. Not a fighting spirit, not a courageous spirit that says, let's use what we have available. And even what we don't have available, let's make it available. No, here, even if they had guns, they probably wouldn't use it. That's what the slave mentality is. They're trained that way. How can he now fight his masters? Now, the mass, now they're out of Egypt, right? They escape, they freedom, exodus. But how could they now fight their masters? But the Jews were weak, this weak spirit, and were not trained in warfare. They didn't have that mentality. Even though now they're out of Egypt. Turn the switch, and now you're free. Now you can fight them. Now you can, now you can use your power, 600,000 men. He still had, retained, continued with this nefesh vela, this lowly spirit. It's not an intellectual thing. Not that they weren't smart. Not that they didn't have the sources. Tell them 500 proofs that you're now free. Look, you see, we're out there. there. It's not a matter of intellect. So we discussed, also the, what we're referring to our metaphor, so to speak, that we're understanding the galut mentality. It's not a matter of sources proving that it could be this way or that way. What develops over 100, 500, 1,000, 2,000 years of being a slave, of being not a nation, of being subordinate to another, other people, of not having a kingdom, prophecy, Sanhedrin, Beit HaMikdash, all the things we pray for, the national institutions that enable the flow of the divine into our world, those were absent from us and became otherworldly. The expectation of the miraculous, the only way it can come. The problem is, and then, When the reality changes, the conceptualization or that misconception remains even after the reality changes. Even now that the, you're free, now that you can do a natural redemption, now you can do certain things to uh, actualize and fulfill that redemption of coming back to the land of Israel. That rabbi sent their students and the Baal Shem Tov sent his students and the Vilna Gon students came to Israel and others even after that. They came to buy land, they buy from the Turkish, you know, it was available. started to develop the land, but it didn't catch on. That was very, the rare few. It didn't become a mass movement. Where were the masses? That the rabbis, before the secular Zionists, that was forbidden, so to speak, to join them. But before that, Rav Kalasher, Rav Gutmacher, the Vilna Gaon, because the masses had this mentality, which again, is not because these rabbis don't know the source that it can come in a natural way or explain to them or prove to them. This is a reality. This is one of the tragedy, maybe the tragedy of exile. I mentioned when you tie your hand back, the, the muscles get used to that new situation. Tie it back for a year, half a year, a few minutes, hours, whatever it takes actually to, this becomes new, the new, the second nature. This becomes the normal state. The expectation of the miracle, that's the norm. That's the only thing that is possible. 
and that's the only way it can come. That's what reality dictated. The relegation of these other hopeful dreams for the mystical world. Leave that to God. So much so that when the reality changes, he said, you should turn the switch now. Now you're free. Now you can do. Now the God has opened up the gates of the redemption that you could do it and work with it within the system of a nature. No. We still have this view. What do you mean? Now you're free. You left Egypt. So God turned it about. The third line from the bottom. Sebev shemeitu kola ama yasemim mitzrayim asrin. So God turned it about. Sin of the spies and other things that caused that this generation that left Egypt, all the males would die in the desert. They didn't have the ability to go into the land of Israel and conquer and capture. There's 31 kings waiting here for us, waiting uh, with all the weapons, so to speak, not with us, uh, not with open arms. It won't be easy. You'll have to here go into the land, derechateva, the natural way. These Jews weren't able to do so. So God turned to the Ebenezer rice. That God, this mental block was so strong that they can't, they, they can't conquer the land. They won't be the ones that can enter. So he turned it about that they would die in the desert. They don't have the power to fight the Knanim. Until the new generation will rise up. Dora Midbar, the generation of the desert. Shalora Ugalut, that didn't see exile. That was born free. Doesn't know what it means to be a slave. Doesn't understand their parents. Why don't you fight? It's a different mentality, not an intellectual thing. I emphasize that again because it's not because the rabbis that so to speak differ or don't see what we think should be obvious to see what God is doing here opening up the gates of uh, of history the gates of redemption the Jews coming back millions of Jews returning to the land the Balfour Declaration San Remo the UN the League of Nations the UN the land giving its food all the signs of redemption are they taking place? no we're not sure this isn't from God or this is we're not how can you know? But look, you see. You're supposed to see. That's what we pray for. God, let us have the eyes to see your return to Zion. Now, apparently, it's not obvious. It takes a prayer to pray to God and to learn to have the eyes that will see. Not everyone will see. Let me be among those that will see your return to Zion because you could be returning to Zion and it's not obvious. Why isn't it obvious? If it's a miraculous process, if it's a miraculous phenomenon, then you don't need to pray to see it. God, when you come back to Zion, there'll be this lightning bolts and the splitting of the Atlantic and the Pacific. There'll be no question. But apparently we have to pray to see it because it's not going to be solved. It'll be maybe this natural, slow process that your hand isn't so clear. In spite of that, let me have the eyes to see it. But that takes training. That's what we're trying to do here. To train the eyes. Learning Torah that it enables us to see beyond the moment, beyond the, the concealment of the divine hand, behind the cloak of nature, of history, of secular movements, of political movements, of even, sec- even anti-religious movements. But those that disagree, I want to say, is not because they don't know, they're not as smart as I am or they are. It's this, uh, one of the explanations, one possible thing, explain other things, the sin of the spies, that the source of this also phenomenon of why throughout history there's been this phenomenon of when the time comes for redemption there's this not waking up for redemption when you come back to Israel they don't want to come back when you're able to come they don't come when they find the spies in the desert and before that they didn't want to leave Egypt they didn't want to the desert the second temple they didn't want to come back only a few came back only the, the ten levels that the Gemara the Mishnah and Kedushin talks about in chapter 4 so it's not a new thing there's this phenomenon of not seeing, not witnessing, not wanting to participate when it comes to Eretz Israel. But on this level, he's referring to here this aspect of this mental inertia, this continuation of the expectation of miracle and miracle alone. 